Well, I think people that are investing in individual stock, it's sad they're careful when they buy a refrigerator or an airplane flight. Or they're careful with their money, and they'll hear about a stock on the bus, and they'll put five or $10,000 on it. They have no idea what they do. So you really got to be careful. Look at the company. Look at the balance sheet. What is the reason the stock should be higher? The sucker's going up. It's not a good reason. Peter Lynch serves us a sizzling stock market analogy comparing stock investing to buying a refrigerator. Can you imagine throwing thousands of dollars at a fridge you overheard about on the bus? Absolutely not. So let's roll up our sleeves, dive into those balance sheets, and uncover the tantalizing reasons for growth. Because let's be honest, the stocks going up is as convincing as a fish riding a bicycle. And look at the balance sheet. If you can add five and five and get reasonably close to 10, you should be able to look at a balance sheet and say, here's two depressed companies. They've gone from 50 to three. One company's got three million in cash, and no debt, one's got three million in debt, no cash, which one are you gonna buy? I mean, that's that, not too hard to do. Lynch sets the stage for the ultimate financial face-off. Two companies enter the ring, one flush with cash and debt-free, the other drowning in debt and gasping for cash. Hold on to your seats, folks. It's crystal clear which contender we're betting on. We're after those scrappy underdogs with rock-solid fundamentals, ready to take on the world and win big. In 08, 09, the banks were doing these no-doc loans and second mortgages and home improvement loans and people are buying boats with it. Now the banks are being much more careful. So we've gone through other crises. Some banks will go under. You know, 400 went under after 08, 09. Now we have stress tests. I think the banking system has improved. There'll be some companies go under. That's the, that's the nature of it. Imagine 1981, we had double-digit inflation, double-digit unemployment, and people worried the Japanese were going to take over the world. I mean, we were hopeless. I mean, there's always something to worry about. Fasten your seatbelts as Lynch takes us on a roller coaster ride through the banking system. Banks have been through the ringer, and boy, have they learned their lesson. They've risen like a phoenix from the ashes. This little nugget of wisdom is a wake-up call for all of us to keep a watchful eye on the industry battleground, distinguishing the market titans from the feeble stragglers. Well, we've had 13 recessions since World War II, and we've had 13 recoveries. Maybe we're going to have one. If this is a recession, it's probably the most predicted one ever. I'd love to know the future. I'd, I think I'd give, it would help. I'd be a better investor. I'd pay five extra dollars for next year's Wall Street Journal. It would really help. Right. I cannot predict the future. But this one, this recession is so expected, so predicted. Maybe it's coming. I don't know. Lynch reminds us that recessions are like a never-ending game of economic musical chairs. But fear not, dear friends, for opportunity lurks in the shadows. Embrace the chaos, for it is our chance to unearth those hidden diamonds in the rough. And who knows? This predictable recession might just be our golden ticket to snatch up some undervalued stocks and gleefully ride off into the sunset. Because after all, fortune favors the bold, and the bold we shall be.